Hi, Tim from the Heresy Group. As you can tell by the title of the video and the thumbnail, we're going to be talking about this today. This is the 416D Dev Group uh, with the Geisley replica front rail from Hayo Industries. An absolutely beautiful made rail. So what made me swap out from the original D&D style uh, front rail to this one? Massively, massively, because I had problems um, with one, the sharpness of the rail, um, and also the bulk of it. It's a very, very bulky rail, as you can see from the bottom of this, and I have the rail guards in here. It's a much, much chunkier rail. Um, there isn't actually that much difference width-wise. It's just the fact that you have these large rail segments all the way down the outside. You can tell I've got rail covers on this one, um, just because I found that it was absolutely shredding my gloves. Um, so I swapped this out, the Geisley rep or the Hayo Industries rail is very much narrower uh, than the original rail that was on here, but it's also much smoother as you can see from the outside here. There is no Picatinny um, mounts that are native to the rail other than on the top of the rail system itself. Now it does come with rail segments, it comes with I think one long and two short rail segments that you can use these screw holes in the side of the rail, as you can see here um, at the three o'clock six o'clock and nine o'clock position to add any accessories that you do require. So it does still allow you to add accessories to the rail, it just gives you a much more sleek profile. Now, previously as well, I would always run the Canted 45 uh, Magpul grip on the front of here, just because I always felt it was nice to have something to grip against. I've never really liked gripping against the rail because I did have those rail covers on. Um, and what I found is that pulling back against that allowed me to pull it nice and tight into my shoulder like so. With this front rail on the front, uh, especially with this, especially the way I grip it, I can actually now hold on to the rail itself. Uh, so it gives me a much better grip. Now one of the reasons that I've moved my torch position as well up onto this higher angle is because I'm no longer using that front grip, um, I've found that my hand tends to wrap around the rail like so. Having the torch, if we just film from the front here a second, uh, up at this kind of one o'clock position, freeze up the three o'clock position so I can wrap my hand over the top and it doesn't obscure my fingers. Can actually run my fingers if I need to right in against the torch. Just gives me a little bit more leeway rather than me having to stop short down here as to where the torch was from before. Still nice and easy to access. So if I flip this round, um, there's a few ways that I can obviously access this if I need to. I can go over the top like so, or can come underneath. And then on the, you know, if I'm gonna transition, run these hands out, then I can still use my left thumb here just to access this torch if needed, um, just if I, when I'm for going through from shooting in uh, left hand and then transitioning back again, I can whip that off over the top or again can go underneath. So it's nice and easy to access. Now this rail is very slightly, I think by about half an inch, longer than the original, uh, by an inch, sorry, uh, longer than the original, as you can just see there. Now, it makes a hell of a difference. Now, I know that a lot of people are gonna ask for a fitting video of this rail, and I was filming one. There was an issue with the delivery. I didn't receive uh, a barrel nut with the rail, so I couldn't do a full fitting video by the time I had got the uh, barrel nut sent out to me. It was the day before Sterling's Op Ferox and I just needed to get the gun built and ready for that weekend because I was going to be using this as it's kind of a retrial run with myself uh, at that event. So what I'll do is insert now all of the process that you have to go through if you do want to swap this rail out on your 416 for Tokyo Marui. Now they do do this rail that will fit a variety of other platforms from VFC and Sistema and so on and so forth, but I will explicitly be talking about fitting it to a Tokyo Marui. So if you do want to fit it to the Tokyo Marui, what you first need to do is remove the front hand guard uh, on the original platform. That is this one here and you can do that starting off by undoing this back nut like so and stripping that off and you can see a photo of the weapon all stripped down. Once that is off, the next system that you have to then take apart is taking the gas block system off the front of the rifle. You can do that, there is two small pins in the bottom of the front gas block uh, and you just poke them out with a punch, unscrew the Allen key out the bottom and that front gas block slides off. Now this is where it gets a little bit more tricky and I know that this element of the build or swapping out for the rail has made a few people nervous. You do have to cut the existing rail lugs or the lugs for sling mounting off of the gun itself. 
So I done that with a Dremel, I cut them short, left about a millimetre sticking out either side, sanded it down, got it nice and smooth and painted it, as you can see, by the pictures. Now looking in the end of the barrel again now, so just looking in there as you can see, the lugs on either side, the left and right side, are now completely missing and obviously you need to take them off for the rail to fit. So that is probably the most scary part of doing this build. Other than that, it's fairly simple. Once the gas block's off, that's cut down. You then slide the new barrel nut down over the outside of the barrel, do it up, down at the base of the gun, you're completely ready to go then. Slide the gas block over, put the gas block, in black block back in place, put your two pins in the bottom, put your Allen key in the bottom of there, put your flash hider on, and then once you've put your flash hider on the end, you can then just slide the rail over the top, and it's very, very simple. Again, you just have that one screw at the side. Just a little side note, there is a little grub Allen key in here above my finger. You do need to uh, make sure that that's loosened. Slide the rail down. Now, sliding the rail over the new um, nut is extremely tight. So what you might want to do is just get a little bit of silicon oil on your fingers, rub it round the outside of the barrel nut, slide the rail over and just give it a little wiggle. Now, I had to give mine a little light tap into place with a hammer, um, just on the top of the rail here, just to knock it back. It needed to go about a millimetre. If you're finding that you're putting your base bolt through and it's not going through with ease, make sure that the rail is completely seated, seated back on the gun. Uh, Weight-wise, <laughs> it's very, very hard to tell. If anything, I would say that um, the Geisley is slightly lighter, but there is very, very little in it. The main thing is the ergonomics and flexibility that you then have with having these different rail mounts. As you can see, I've got the uh, LNS Precision uh, surefire mount, the canted one that allows you to slide it into the rail uh, at the top and, and on the angles. You can run them down lower as well, but I do like the position of where it is. Can I say that this has massively changed the gun? No. Has it made it more ergonomic, a little bit more friendly to use? Most definitely. Uh, one of the other key points that I think really need to be sung and praised about is the quality of this rail is absolutely beautiful. I cannot, just by showing you on here, uh, express how good the quality and the cut and the machining on this rail is. It is absolutely beautiful from both sides. The finish on this rail is incredible, and it's why they are more expensive than others that are on the market, but definitely, definitely worth it. Has this swapped over my love uh, for this over my SCAR? No, I still love the SCAR platform. Um, I used this all weekend at Sterling, done lots of tight CQB in it, got some really good long range engagements too, was working under night vision, using the torch you know, consistently over the weekend. Um, it is a real great platform, but I do still love my SCAR. Um, and it is kind of the one that, that, that always jumps out to me, the one I want to use. I'm gonna run this again. Uh, I've got another event coming up uh, this week weekend uh, with the guys down at uh, Darkwater for Grey Slate 2, so if you are going to be down there, I will see you down there for it. But the Hey Ho Rail, a real, real beautiful addition to the gun, has made it look a little bit more Gucci, but for the main, main part, it has made it much more functional and easy to use. Obviously, don't have to run that accessory on the bottom rail anymore either. Uh, one more thing, it does have sling points either side. As you can see, they sit underneath my D-bow, so it does make them a little bit difficult to access, but I've always run these on the single point configuration for the back. It's just the way I've always run the 416. So um, any more information about that, anything I've missed, any questions, anything like that, please make sure you put them in the comments box below. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. If you've liked the video, please make sure you tick, uh, give us a like. It really does help the channel, obviously um, helps us with our ratings and all that sort of thing. So a like really, really much appreciated. Uh, again, guys, I will put a link to the Hey Ho Rail down in the description box below. Massive thank you to the guys over at Hey Ho Industries for getting it out to me um, and getting the new nut out to me so so fast really really impressed with the quality of this it is absolutely incredible so guys thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all soon